But thank you for coming. Uh, if you go through school today, I went through schools in the 1970s. I uh, grew up in Kalang Airport. My school background was such that um, as class monitor, by half the term, uh, halfway to the term, you know, the register, half the students never turn up. <laughs> so I went up to my teacher and said, Mrs. Po, you know, half the students never come. Mr. Su looked at me and said, dear, it's all right. Next term, 1A will combine with 1B. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to school today, climate change is everywhere. It's an emotional burden that our youth carry. If you grew up in the 1970s and 80s, I grew up with the burden of nuclear warfare. Okay, I wrote letters to the press. I didn't understand why uh, we had enough kilotons of uh, nuclear energy to bomb the world many times over. Okay, I took part in little protests against Russia. But now this is real, a real issue that face us. Okay, but so why study so hard? I am struggling to teach my kids these things as they go through the school system. Integrity, character, encouragement. We study hard in spite of the ice age that is coming because we want to develop integrity in the midst of income gap, character, especially com compassion, and encourage them to engage society. I'll tell you some stories about the past, the present, future, and then uh, we have about, I'll give ample time for Q&A, which I think parents, we can come together. Integrity is relational. So abstract concept. I lived 15 years in Yunnan, and uh, my wife has much more brains than me. There was option of homeschooling, but I put my kids in a local school. If you know Chinese school is 70 kids per class, you study from 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening, come back with four hours of homework. My kids come back here and say, wow, holiday, <laughs> half day only, <laughs> right? So my wife asked me, why are we putting my kids through this system? when there is no need for us as expats to put my kids through a local Chinese school. They're one of the few foreigners that actually opted the Chinese school. And I shared my wife, I said, I want my kids in school to have integrity. That's number one. And integrity is relational. It's not honesty, it's not something that you sit down and you decide to be honest and by yourself you look at the mirror, I'm honest, and it doesn't work that way. They got to rough it out in school, especially in a school of 70 kids per class, right? Build integrity. So I tell this story. Uh, as a medical doctor, I, I realized that in very poor areas, water was crucial. Tablets, injections, all these are secondary. So providing water is crucial to any village. If I can provide five liters of clean water a day, to a person within 50 meters, don't need to be in your house. I cut down diarrhea disease, the number one killer in kids in the mountains, by 50%. So simple. So one day I was talking to this village, uh, village, uh, not village, hate man, hate woman. Okay, in the rural areas where alcohol is a problem, when you find a woman leader, whether women hospital director, women school principal, woman village, uh, hate man or hate woman, you work with them because they, they hold the reins together. Huh? Okay. So she showed me this dam or, and said the dam is leaking. I said, why? What happened? She said, I also don't know. I mean, she's not an engineer. She never went to school. I, I have no idea about dams, but it was leaking. And she said, Laugh. I said, what happened? Why leak? She said, well, the only thing after the discussion she can consider was that years ago, there were trees on the dam. In the name of progress, because people starting by buying motorbikes, tricycles, you know, and small little tractors, you know, the Tuolachi, uh, to allow the, these vehicles to cross, they had to cut down the tree. And after cutting down the trees, the dam started to leak. Water just... We never proved it, but we think the roots were gone. That the roots held the dam together. It's a mud out of them and the dam leak. Integrity is like that. Okay. In our system in Singapore, we look at the produce, the outcome, the output, the KPIs. 
the trees, the fruits, the leaves, how big it is. As parents, we are here today to look at the roots. Okay, the schooling system, to me in Singapore, is a decent, if I may be biased, excellent school system. I mean, where else in the world? Right? I, I knew that people ask me, how could I stay so long in China? I say that in China, if I grew up there, I would be a farmer. I lecture at Fulton University Medical School, average IQ 130. My IQ 120. I would have never gone to medical school if I was born in China, full stop. <laughs> right? I would be in the village tilling the ground. Okay, so we have an educational system that is like that. And I accept it. And I will tweak it for my kids. And I guess that's what we are here for. Right? As parents coming on a Saturday morning to ask, so what's in this educational system that I want for my kids? And for me, I want the education system to help me as a parent develop integrity in my son and my daughter. That is my long-term goal about the educational system. So there's this Hebrew Jewish proverb that says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of, an e of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. It basically says, friends will, good friends will tell you the truth. Right? Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Okay, I, as a doctor, I look at these wounds. Uh, this word wounds is a, uh, in uh, Jewish writing, eh? Pese Re. I took a course in Hebrew poetry. That's why this, this was very special to me. Uh, there are all kinds of wounds. No? Step wounds, if you're forensic pathologies, wounds that kill, wounds that don't kill, you know, wounds that smash, lacerating wounds, deep wounds. And this word wounds here is very unique. It means blue black, or chi, you know, a bruise. Painful, hurts, but you will recover. So faithful are the wounds of a friend. It doesn't give us the, the right to go around and criticize everybody. Okay? It doesn't give you the, the soapbox to run down people's opinions. But it gives you the congeniality to say, hey, you know, I think what you do is wrong. And where can my kids learn that? If I keep telling my son, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, he say, you are nagging, you are nagging, you are nagging. But he needs to be put in a school environment among peers, among friends, where his friends rub shoulders with him. And he learns from me as a father, and he learns from his friends what is right and what is wrong. And when I relocated back to Singapore two years ago, my kids were the saddest. They asked me why. Why should we come back? And I explained to them that friends they make in school are friends for life. Isn't that true for all our experience? Friends you make in school are friends for life. And in China, like everywhere else, uh, partly because of their hukou system. Uh, apologies, I, I, don't, I hardly spoke Chinese before I left Singapore. So I learned Chinese in China, so I cannot cross-translate. <laughs> hukou is a, I mean, I just pick it up. It's a, something like residence permit, right? Uh, hukou. Uh, uh, sorry? Uh, residence permit or something like that. So because of the hukou system, all their friends, and also because of the desire to seek back the schools, were all were moving. By grade 6, sec 1, sec 2, they were moving. So their friends were moving. So I say, I, I say my one reason for putting you in school is integrity. Second is to make friends, but your friends are moving. I want to move you back to an environment where your friends you make in school will be friends for life. At least you get contact. So the formative years of teenage life, I choose a school by the friends they will make. Okay. So they said, why not an international school? There was a very good international school. So I went to look at international school, but the, the feature of an international school is such that every month uh, you get a farewell party and goodbye party. My father posted to Beijing. Ah, sorry, uh, my father posted back to the head office. So I said, well, it's great. You develop a, a, a worldwide view of friends. You count your friends by continent, but I need your friends to be there when your boyfriend break up with you. Right? I cannot tell. I mean, haven't break up yet, uh, my daughter. <laughs> but when she break up, I tell her, never mind, no count, you know, no count. It's my, her friend must tell her, never mind. <laughs> right? So, so I, I explained to them that we are coming back because I, 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 went, I explored different places. Honestly, I went to Penang, look at East Malaysia, I look at places where I, I could work as a doctor among the poor. I mean, that's my passion. I like to work among the poor. I say that 
Uh, but I think we'll come back to Singapore. All right? Because of friendship. Okay. So like I said, I expected 10 people to come. And uh, we were supposed to go to coffee shop. Okay. And uh, this is what for you now. If going to school is like a fruit, I think it is like a, you fill in the blanks. If going to school is like an animal, I think it is like a, okay, to facilitate our discussion. Think about this. I don't know how you are seated, but you know, just turn to the person on your left or right, you know, introduce yourself. My kid is in what grade? And then answer these two questions. If going to school is like a fruit, I think it is like a durian because very thorny. Right, going to school is like an animal because I think it's a skunk, smelly, whatever, okay? few minutes, just turn to your right, left and right. I mean, we are Singaporeans or guests here. Just turn, okay? Answer these two questions. Okay, going to school is like a fruit, I think it's like a, and why, okay? And if you're going to a school, is like an animal, I think it's like a, if I was more IT savvy, I would have you to, to email the answers to me, but I'm not so. Okay, so take a few moments. want to get us thinking, right? Chen Rui, Chen Rui, primary four, very interesting. He tells me that uh, if going to school is like uh, fruit, it is like an orange. Why orange, Chen Rui? Shout out, right? Because it's sometimes sweet or sour. Sometimes sweet and sometimes sour. <laughs> sweet, okay, and sour, right? And uh, he says, out of five days, two days sweet, three days sour. <laughs> As a parent, I was taught by the teacher of my son, primary one teacher, 70 kids per class. I asked her, how do you manage? And this teacher, I think, uh, I should have worked hard, work her hard, work hard to bring her as a foreign talent. She says, she's so, so small, you know. She says, if, my, if the kids love me, I can teach them anything. Is this powerful? She says, if the kids love me, I can teach them anything. And so she tells the parents, help me. Okay? Help me by getting the kids to uh, like what I do. If you have criticisms about the teacher, tell me. Don't tell the kids. <laughs> right? Give me a call. Talk to me. Don't go and tell, hey, your teacher, like that, like that, like that. Okay. So we maintain very good communication with the teachers. And that's integrity. That is faithful are the wounds of a friend. That I teach my kids that if you have a problem, you tell the person in charge. You tell the person that is, the problem is about. Don't tell the whole world. Okay? So think, I think it's important for us to give avenues of expressions to our children about their, school about their school experience. And not just in grades. Grades are important somewhere. Somewhere along the way they are important. But they cannot be number one. So why study? So like these two pictures, are we grooming our kids so that at the end of their so-called school career, they become like that? <laughs> I took my kid out of school. We went camping for three, camping and hiking and back backpacking for three months. And we ended up in Scandinavia uh, because my nurse uh, were working, I work with lap leprosy patients. One of my nurses was in Scandinavia and uh, we, we came and I found that the Scandinavian system uh, at graduate level, highly motivated. 
if boys, especially boys, huh? if boys have an X number of hours, they, their buttock can sit on a chair. They will burn it out by the time they hit junior college or second year university in Singapore. If, uh, I mean, ballpark figure. After that, they don't study anymore. Okay. Because I, 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 schooling came difficult for me, my wife and I financial plan. Okay. Number one, every 10 years, we quit our jobs and go back to school. So I'm doing my, I'm now 51, I'm back in NUS as a master's student. The oldest in my class. Very scary, you know. That day when they were, on the first day of school, when they said calculated, they wanted, the prof wanted us to calculate something. So I said, please take out our calculator now. So I took out mine, you know. And the girl next to me asked me, hey, doctor, what is that? Huh? I said, calculator, <laughs> plus, minus, divide. He said, cannot, no, this one cannot. You must calculate, must say function one. So I took out their calculator, which I didn't even know how to switch on and off. So I kept it. <laughs> Right? And, and like Singaporeans, are, towards the end of the exam, somebody asked the prof, Prof, where are the past year exam questions? Okay. Anyway, the prof asked me, so how you calculate uh, tangent, cotangent? I said, logbook. Ah. <laughs> the prof said, what is a logbook? The prof asked me, logbook, never see before. <laughs> okay, never mind. So during that, the, I asked prof, I mean, somebody asked prof, where are the past year exam papers? That's fine. This is what the prof said, is in the library top right hand corner. <laughs> the whole class heard it, I heard it. When the class is over, I told my friend, let's go to the library and find it. And they all said, doctor, doctor, no. What the prof meant uh, is, uh, it is NUS, my library, top right hand corner. You click it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wow, it's a different world, but it's great learning. Okay? It's great learning. It keeps you young. Okay? So, my purpose of going, of sending my kids to school is to exp I mean, this is Singapore. We have the luxury of it. Okay, this is a luxury of choices. Okay, don't be blinded by the one, one track, high flying choice. Okay, we have choice, we have freedom. Pick and choose. Understand the Singapore system, pick and choose. Something that will allow your kid to blossom. So that the kid at the end of so-called the first 12 years of study career is like that and not like that. I came back and I met a surgeon, my classmate, top class surgeon. I mean, we are friends, very good friends. He, and he told me he has not read a book for the past 12 years or 15 years. I look at him and I say, I don't think you're very educated. No. Yeah, he says, no, just maybe read newspaper and night watch video. <laughs>